Welcome to the True Face Podcast, where we have conversations about what we can learn from what's going on in our lives. My name is Robbie Engel, and I'll be your guide as we learn how to increase trust and experience grace. Most of us get stuck in our relationships with God and others, and we end up wondering, is this really all there is to it? True Face equips you to experience deeper relationships with God and others. Uh, experiencing deeper relationships by a, with a toolbox of relational teaching and experiences to help you experience the peace and freedom of the original good news. And on this episode, I am with the OG, the Dr. Bruce McNichol. Bruce is the founder and president emeritus of True Face. Uh, he, his teaching uh, through story and metaphor, had a huge impact on my life, continues to uh, get to speak to people in big, small, one-on-one. -on -one. And he loves walking with uh, young leaders in business and professional life. This guy's passion is to do that. He's got all kinds of degrees, finance, law, theology, leadership. Uh, he's authored a bunch of books, which you know, uh, The Cure, Bose Cafe, The Ascent of a Leader, Behind the Mask, The Kingdom Life, and he's married to Janet, who's a homemaker, nurse, and mentor, and amazing, and makes Bruce look even better. Uh, and Bruce and Janet have three kids, and is it fifth grandkid on the way? Yes. Number five. That is awesome. Uh, Bruce, how does it feel? You uh, facilitated the True Face podcast for some years before I hijacked it and took it from you. How does it feel to be a guest on your own thing you started? Yeah, I love it. And I, and I love that you're in that role now, not me. And uh, it, was, it was often a variety of people just sitting around in a room uh, before you had this fancy video going on. And so I am really appreciative of just sitting here knowing that, that God has brought to pass uh, your leadership uh, saw it going on four years almost uh, this June. Fantastic. Do you have any buyer's regret or buyer's remorse? How, how many times have you had that is a better question over the past almost four years together? <laughs> I have a lot of gratitude. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell people that all the time. I got to be in several cities in Southern California last weekend, and I got to tell that to people who are in their 30s, people who are in their 70s, that God had his hand on this process. And it, it took three years. Sometimes you get impatient. Uh, you you want to pull the trigger. And I'm glad we didn't until we were three years deep into that process. And, and I have to say, I admire the board for not flinching during that time. How many boards would have said, hey, let's let's try something different? Uh, but they went right through with it. And now looking back almost four years, I'm grateful. I, I am super grateful. And you know, and I know a big part of that equation. You know, we, we should do a podcast on uh, what we've learned from secession because it's such a massive thing in all of our lives, whether we're in leadership, own something, run something, we're a pastor or just in our roles and responsibilities that we have that we need to empower and pass along to others in our life. Um, I think I, you have been a case study in humility and the fact that I, I like you and I love you more now after four years than not, I know is statistically uh, very unique uh, for us right. to be in this with authenticity, having a fun conversation together and uh, love each other. Absolutely. And I, I think I've learned more from succession things that have gone sideways and said, you know, why did that happen? What caused this? And so just to be sitting in this situation, watching you as the next generation uh, leadership has been, uh, yeah, a lot of joy, a lot of joy. I, uh, I, I know I was too young at the time, but now I'm aging into it I, as you're giving me a hard time that I'm turning 40 and I've got these issues. And I was, I was uh, talking to a friend of ours who's like, knows these truths so much better, smarter than me and the insecurity of like, ah, he should be stewarding this thing. I'm like, wait, he's too old. He's in his fifties. The board doesn't want to have to go through it again for a while. So hopefully they have a couple more years with us young guys. Yeah. A couple more decades would be better. Yeah. That's, that's the hope. Um, 
so I've been able to, uh, I, I mean, the writing and the teaching of True Face um, had a huge impact on my me. Just, I love reading. Somebody recommended The Cure probably 12 years ago now. I read it and I said, this is the clearest articulation uh, that has the complexities of truth of who is God, who am I, how do we interact with others? And it distilled it down into beautiful language that I could uh, chew on and meditate on and give words to my experience more succinctly. And which what that is, is a catalyst for me understanding and applying truth in my life, which leads to healthier, better relationships with God and others. And so thanks once again uh, for doing that. And then I bought enough books that eventually somehow we got to know each other and uh, it, it turned into a relationship instead of um, admiration from afar. And as we have been closer now, uh, the past few years, it's it's so awesome to um, have you as an example and a, and a mentor. And so um, a couple of people have said, why don't you get them on more? And I was like, yeah, it's pretty stupid. I should. So Bruce, welcome back. It's been a hiatus since you were on the podcast that you started. Uh, and this is this is an easy one for me to jump in and go, all right, we got Bruce. And every time we meet, I could literally uh, for the next like 100 meetings just go, what you thinking about? And it'll be um, and, and about 99 of those. I'll be conservative. Uh, I'll take away something. So no pressure, but I have no expectations. I don't know really what we're going to talk about today. But I wanted to get you on here to go, hey, what are you thinking about? And share that with uh, the broader True Face tribe. So Bruce, Dr. Bruce McNichol, fun to have you back on. And what are you thinking about? Well, I've been thinking about probably one of the most sacred aspects of Christianity that we could possibly talk about, and that is friendship. It is right at the core of the gospel. And uh, I was thinking the other day, you know, what kind of a God uh, tells his subjects that they are his friends? I call you friends. I don't call you servants because you know me and you know what's going on. You know what the father has given me to do. And I, I think about the fact that Jesus wants to be known by us and he wants to know us very closely. It's, it's an intimate relationship that he wants. Uh, he wants to be known, wants others to know him, but he wants me to let him know me better. And uh, he has a lot of questions. He asks a lot of questions in the gospel. He has a lot of questions for me. And I, I think about the questions of like, what, where are you today in your life? He will ask me that. What are the things that are getting you tense? Where, what do you fear? What are you hoping for? Who are the relationships in your life that you want to see uh, come even closer to you? And so when, when he um, was talking about this friendship thing in John 15, it was that same meeting where he said, I, I just have a metaphor for you. And the metaphor is I have this bread and I have this cup, I have, I have this wine, and I want you to use it to help you remember. Well, I realized in my life quite a few years ago now that I had over institutionalized that little metaphor mm -hmm. and that I thought, okay, we do this uh, quarterly or we do this on Sundays or whatever, but that wasn't what he was talking about. It was so informal, it was not institutionalized. And even when the apostle in 1 Corinthians 11 is helping people to do that again, he doesn't say, uh, now we're restricted to doing this. Um, we, we can only do this every so often. He says, whenever, and whenever you do that, you get to remember Jesus. And uh, I, I realized, wow, I can be doing this all the time in all kinds of situations. Uh, there's nothing greater than uh, being able to uh, look into Jesus and to say, Hey, what do you have for me today? And I tend to forget. So you said, remember, and you said, here's, here's a, here's a little metaphor for you. And you, because it's so simple, like Jesus teaching, you can do it anytime, anywhere for any reason. And you can come closer to abiding in Jesus. 
so a lot a lot of us listening to this uh we do have an institutional solemn sacredness uh to communion there's some low grade fears that i had growing up of like wait wait have i am i is my heart right have i prayed enough am i thinking the right thing before i do this and like did i do i have anything unrepentant uh you're saying that's off i i think that is part of what we want to do when we come to jesus like i always think about three c's just to keep it simple for me i think about I want to do this so I can celebrate Jesus. And if Jesus is the one in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, <laughs> then I will never get to the end of this celebration. I cannot even imagine all the things. If he's going to take the ages to come to show us the riches of his kindness and his grace toward us in, in Christ Jesus, well, we're we're just getting started. So that I think about celebrating all those things. And it's not just Jesus on the cross. It's Jesus of the cross as well. So certainly the cross is, is core. It's what, it's what started us on this beautiful journey in the first place that made it possible. But it's just the start. So there's too much to celebrate. <laughs> just way too much. Um, the th second thing is I, I can use it as a fresh way to, to commit again, to him, to, to let out of that joy that comes from celebration, the overflow of following in his steps and doing those things that he by his spirit is calling me to. And the third thing I think about is I use this as a time to connect other people to him. It's where we're made for a connection. And what a better way than to, to just use this metaphor as a way to say, Jesus, today, I want to connect this person who's going through, let's say, this loss. And um, so next month, I'll be with one of our great partners, highly respected, um, who co-founded Grace Network International, but who in their family lost their 32-year-old daughter this last year. Well, we're going to celebrate communion together to remember mm -hmm. that when, when everything else is coming loose in life, Jesus is the rock. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. And he's sometimes the only thing I feel like that's not moving. So those are the three C's to celebrate, commit again, and then to connect people. Uh, it's such a privilege. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow it down and tease this out because if, if y'all have read The Cure, you're like, these jokers chalk so much theology into like one-liner paragraphs. Uh, every time I read it, I'm like, you slip that in and that's like deep theological teaching. So just to recap, to tell you, I see what you're doing here. Here's what I heard, Bruce. You started uh, with a you know subtle statement that one of the sacred aspects of Christianity is friendship, of which, which, as a point that what deity, what God of the universe would say, you're my friends. So this is like the sacred meaning unique and special aspect of Christianity. And in that, a friendship is indicated by intimacy. And intimacy, these are my notes, uh, is reflected by uh, to be known by us and to know us, a mutual understanding of each other which looks like being known in order to experience intimacy. And the tool he used was questions uh, in order to model and draw us into himself, of which you say he still does, of, um, of asking us questions. And just like a question is a tool to be known and known and experience intimacy and build friendship, which is a relationship of love, which is the sacred aspect of Christianity, Another tool that he gave us to do that and celebrate friendship is this communion thing, which is uh, he said, do this in remembrance of me together with celebrate cross and connect being aspects of this, this gift of a metaphor to celebrate him, to, rem to remember him with celebration, what he made possible and did on the cross and to connect us to those truths, remembrance of those truths, and to connect other people to those truths. Did I hear all that correctly? Yeah, that's a beautiful summary. Uh, I'm glad we're recording. That is- You said it. 
Yeah, I'm so, glad we're recording because people can go, did he say all that? Go back. Those are my notes. He slipped all that in in like 30 seconds, and it takes me about five minutes to unpack it. <clears throat> well, I, I tell you what, this is uh, this little metaphor is also a, a discipling tool. Hmm. And, uh, it is a way for us to, uh, as, as, it, as it means to mathetesis, is a way for us to apprentice uh, in the way of Jesus. He, hmm. he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, I came to give you joy. So here is a little thing that you can do anytime for any reason. So we, I, I think in terms of family, it's also a discipleship tool. Like when Nicole uh, got her first new to her car and, uh, and, and she worked for it, we worked for it. We, we all hopped in the car and had communion together. Oh, why do we do that? Because we wanted to celebrate. This is a tremendous gift that Nicole just got. But for perspective's sake, there's no greater gift than Jesus. So let's keep that in our mindset as we get all excited about shiny things. Like well, the boys and I have had uh, communion out in the surf and in, in the ocean. And uh, uh, to, to know that there's nothing more exhilarating uh, than Jesus. And so as much fun as we may be having out here, uh, we can celebrate out here. And thanks to Amazon, I can order a hundred of these, these little, I got, I got one of them here, one of these little packets. And, uh, and so, you, you know, you can have it out in the surf. You just have to make sure you carry the little cup to the shore. That's, uh, that's important. Uh, so, so you're a pastor and a professional Christian. So I'm assuming you blessed that cup and wafer uh, before you did it in surfing for those of us who might be thinking you're sacrilegious or not honoring yeah. or whatever. Um, you're saying that's probably, a uh, that's not how you read uh, what Jesus gave us this metaphor for and how to use it so that anybody has the power and the, well, res opportunity, responsibility, ability to do this sacred um, thing called communion with their friends in a car on the surf? Yeah, I think so. We, again, we institutionalize and in so doing, we, we have our sacred departments and then we have our mundane departments, but that's not how God sees life. He created all of life. So he's not going to separate that. And he, uh, I'm, I'm sure the evil one would like to separate and say, oh, you know, this is this is kind of a, some some kind of routine that you do. You got to do it. Uh, somebody's got to be formal to bless it. And you meanwhile, all this life has passed and we are not using the very simple little metaphor that Jesus knew anybody in the world, the poorest in the world can celebrate with a, a similar kind of metaphor uh, as as a little cup and an a little wafer. Um, when when I go hiking, uh, when I'm home, I, I have communion every day because there's just too much again to celebrate uh, mm. about Jesus. And I there are too many people that need him. People that I meet on the trail when I'm hiking in the ridges by our home here in Phoenix uh, who don't know Jesus. And and uh, several of them have, have seen this little communion cup because I would tell them, even though they don't know Jesus, he's my superhero. He's my hero of heroes. And that's why I celebrate him. So people that don't even know him get a chance to ponder the power and the beauty, the transcendence of Jesus, and yet the friendship of Jesus. So like, um, I, I, back to family. Um, I'm sitting here uh, in my office, but Behind me is a Harry Potter library because my office doubles as a sleepover room for one of our grandchildren, Willow. And Willow and I have been celebrating communion together since she was six. Hmm. And uh, so when we go out on the ridges uh, hiking together, uh, she will say, hey, Papa, did you did you remember the Jesus snacks? She calls them Jesus snacks. And uh she, she said, because the most important thing that we do out here is to celebrate Jesus. And I have a, I have a cliff out on the ridges where I go, but she has this little wooded area 
where that's where we are going to have communion together. And so for her at this very early stage to realize, oh, I can focus on Jesus with a very simple metaphor so that Jesus can become my friend even more so than just getting to meet him for the first time. Uh, mm. I look at it as a tremendous privilege uh, that Jesus didn't say, well, hey, we, we're going to restrict this now and it's got to be formal. And uh, you, you realize that after he did this, that all those, all those people that got the bread and the wine, they all within a day or two left him. They abandoned him. They betrayed him. And yet they all got a chance to keep celebrating throughout their lives. And that's another thing about Jesus is he knows when we're going through sadness. He, he knows what it's like to be abandoned by, quote, his friends. And yet he is the standard bearer for what it means to forgive and repent. And, and these are more things that we can thank Jesus for and, and say, hey, Jesus, I know you know what I'm going through because you've gone through it too, more so than I have. Hmm. I, I'm looking, at, well, two things in that. One is that you're right. I remember like, because Judas, he had communion with Judas mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. Judas went out. Yeah. Um, right. Was it or was it? I can't remember because he said whoever dips their, you know, yeah. bread in this cup with me and then he got up and left. But right. I can't remember if that was before now, but so I, I just looked at, you know, Matthew 26 and then in Mark 14 talking about this, because in my head, I'm going, it's interesting that, um, this remembrance, uh, with celebration of what he did on the cross and, and as a, as a way to connect that connect piece, do, how much does that kind of like, uh, mean, should be done in community with believers because there's been a premise in my head as this gift to do in fellowship as the body of Christ in remembrance, which meals yeah. were the, the normal gathering of believers. And that was such a routine thing to share meals together that that's why it was bread and wine. Cause that was the most common thing at a meal. In a, so every time you gather, remember me, and this is a metaphor to remember me. That's right. Um, that's right. Tell me about the, the practice of you doing that individually. I don't think I've ever met anybody who does has done communion alone. Yeah. So unpack that for me. And I'm not double checking you in scripture right now to see if there's a reference to this, but I kind of am just for the record. <laughs> I haven't yeah. found it yet in Matthew and Mark, but I'm not into Luke and John right. yet. <laughs> Keep reading. Yeah. Yeah. Keep searching those scriptures, my friend. Um, this is, is really important to do in community. So this is not an either or it's, it's very important to do in community. And I think it's when we're in community, it's a great time for us to connect, not only with Jesus, but as Jesus connects us to one another, to be praying for each other, to be in a spirit of authentic, loving relationship with those in the family of God. Um, but also there are many, many Christians now, unfortunately, uh, growing in this country and other countries who no longer choose to be in community with Christians. So if you think about uh, some in your generation and in the coming generation, uh, as one of them said to me, a 26 year old the other day, this is the only time that I ever have communion is with you. Wow. He, he, he no longer goes to church but he knows Jesus. So what I'm saying to him is, you know, this is a way for you to understand that as imperfect as a community may be, and they all are, that Jesus is perfect. And he wants to put those two things together, himself and our imperfect communities. So you may enjoy celebrating this with me. Uh, I celebrated with him because he was going through a failure of, of a marriage. And I said, you know, this mm. is really traumatic for you. And Jesus knows all about it. He, he knew about it ahead of time. Jesus wants to restore. He wants to redeem. So when you think about the fact that you're, uh, you've made a choice a few years ago to, to not um, go to church anymore. But guess what? If you had had some really close friends, 
besides me to, to lean on, to be your community, you would be in such a more refreshed, restored, resilient place today. So I just want to encourage you, think about maybe returning to a community. So that's another, again, it's another discipling moment. Um, mm. And uh, so I, I, yeah, I, and Jesus didn't put a lot of rules on this. You know, he didn't say, now you got to have 12 people before yep. you do this. He didn't, yeah. he just said, I know that you will tend to forget me. This is to help you remember. Yeah. And what a gift, like what is more routine other than sleeping mm -hmm. than eating? Like our, our need for rest. I mean, like eating is the most frequent thing that we need in order to be sustained and to connect that common element of eating and drinking to a remembrance of being sustained in him together as believers. He's a clever, cool God who knows yeah. like what we need. And, but I've never, you know, and, and Sabbath is similar. I mean, he knew we needed a weekly discipline or rhythm of, of built in humility of dependence on his accomplishment and, and the ability that we can rest yes. because he has done what a gift that is as a, as a blessing and as a remembrance on a weekly rhythm. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, all the, all that we're talking about here is just uh, like another expression practice that you can do. You, it, Sabbath is a really good practice to put into our lives. Uh, prayer is a really good practice. Uh, being uh, having solitude is a really good practice. This is one of the reasons I do it on my hike because that's a forty minute piece of solitude in communion with Jesus. But all these, all that we're talking about with this metaphor is just simply another practice. It just happens to be one of Jesus's favorite practices because he's the one that started it. Man. So you're, you're, you're cool on Luke 22. You're, you're safe, by the way. I'm just checking you. Um, John, it, where does he, it, it is communion in John? Uh, yes. Uh, you would go to John, I think it's 13. Um, it's right at the beginning of several wow. things that he wants to teach them. Um, washing the feet. Yeah. Um, predicts his betrayal. Yeah. Denial. Yep. Okay. I haven't. I don't want to. I don't want to keep checking because I think you're solid here. Um, just in case you're wondering. But um, it's it's interesting. I we do this hangout that you've been to at my house called hot dogs. Yeah. Uh, it's an intergenerational group of guys who get it, who get together once a month for two hours. Um, and, and it's really been special, like surprisingly special. Like we thought, Hey, what, what frustrates the evil one? I was having a breakfast conversation with Tim Baker and what frustrates the evil one was a normal conversation with Tim. He's that kind of guy. And it was an intergenerational group of people that love Jesus that get together. He, he gets frustrated. He starts sweating. What's going to happen? And that happens at, in our churches, hopefully, you know. And, but then I was like, I'm missing that environment outside of the formalities and prescription of church that has more breathing room of relationship. That's that's has more intergenerational opportunity than my normal group that's a little smaller and more intimate. Um, and so we were like, let's invite some guys over. So we sent an email, cooked hot dogs, and we've been doing it every month since for like two and a half years now. And it's one of the highlights of my month. And this isn't for anything other than I want it. Um, and yeah. I want to experience it. And at Christmas a month ago, um, we, we, we have hot dogs on paper plates, y'all. Don't overthink this. Like in a bag of chips, our go-to is a bag of chips, uh, hot dog, beans, and Kirkland, everything. And then, yep. uh, what else do we, a bottle of water. Right. Yep. And then some guys bring extra stuff. So it's always, sometimes you get nothing. Sometimes it's like a feast, but for Christmas tree, like, let's go big, bring a side dish and I'll smoke a Turkey. And so we were, there is about 12, 15 of us sitting around the table, just fellowshipping and we had communion and it felt rich in remembrance and celebrating together, uh, 
Jesus and um, around Christmas and his birth. And we were just meditating on it. And we didn't like, we just kind of were talking and celebrating and it, and it was disruptive to a couple of guys there because they were like, I don't know if it's possible, but yeah. you're, you're stretching it for some of us. But I, um, I love this as a, a tool and a gift connected to friendship and remembrance and uh, yeah. How clever is he? Because I've translated the Sabbath thing, but not communion in my life mm -hmm. uh, ever mm -hmm. into the accessibility that I have of this tool as this gift to celebrate, remember the cross and connect with others. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And I think it is, like you say, it can be awkward for some people who have in their mind, this is a, this is a paradigm shift. This is a pivot for them to realize, oh, when Jesus gave this, he didn't put any rules on it. He, he made it very simple so that all of us could do it. But sometimes I know I'm in a group that will, um, that will be awkward for them. It's, it's like some people who first receive affirmation. It's like, oh, that, that felt good. And it doesn't feel good. And, and so come to know me and don't, don't know me. You know, it's back and forth. Communion for people that have institutionalized it can feel that way. And so sometimes I will just say to them, we're not going to celebrate communion right now, but I just want to give you this little cup for you on your own, whenever you want to, with whoever you want to, maybe you can do it by yourself. You do it in your own way, because that's the spirit in which Jesus instituted this little metaphor. Hmm. All right. I'm going to do it with my family. Yeah, that's that's right. I don't, um, I don't know if I've ever done it. Just my family my, maybe once years ago, probably from a conversation with you, but uh, Bruce, this has been a gift. This has been uh, so much fun. And as we wrap, I, I, I want to uh, share about an opportunity to do this, have communion together that we're setting up. Um, and, and you can leave us with whatever word or blessing you would like to. Um, but first, I, I wanted a lot of people don't know that we are. It's been a few years, but we're getting together as a tribe. Uh, we have a retreat coming up two night, three days two nights, three days in Asheville, North Carolina uh, in October. And I need to have the date exactly before I do an update like this. It looks like October 27th to the 29th. If you go to trueface.org forward slash retreat, this is where you sign up. And there's limited spots and uh, that we've got a few left. And so it, it, once we get capacity, it's going to be, we're going to hit capacity. It's going to be booked. So, uh, and before March 1st, uh, you get an early bird rate. So go before March 1st to trueface.org forward slash retreat and sign up um, for this retreat. It's at cost. Uh, we might even lose some, but we're, it, hopefully it will be a blessing to the tribe to come and, and disconnect and connect to God and others. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Todd Fields is going to be leading worship. We are going to uh, do communion. Do you say do communion, practice communion? Bruce, what's the, how do I say this? I, I don't care. We, you can take communion too. You, there's all kinds of ways to do this. Yeah. But and we're going to do it together in Asheville and yeah. you're not going to miss it. Uh, you're going to get some teaching from us and some community and you're going to, uh, it, it's going to be a, a really special time. So uh, sign up. First come, first serve, and uh, I'm pumped to see you there. So this is your warning or your update or your heads up. Don't blame me if you're all upset two months from now and call and be like, bro, sis, you should have listened to the podcast. Uh, all right, Bruce, what do you want to leave us with, man? Well, I, I just want to put a second on that October retreat because this is a time uh, that's it's quite unusual. We haven't done it for years. It's a time for us to be together as friends, again, to deepen that friendship. Many times we're together in just a short sprint and we don't get an opportunity to relax and, and be with friends and get to know each other the way we long to, because God's put that in us. So 
yeah, I, I know we're going to run out of those slots. So please, if you're listening, sign up and let's be friends together over that weekend in October. Thanks, man. That's what you're leaving with. That's a strong encouragement. How about you pray us out, Bruce? And I have a proposal for the next year's uh, retreat. You can tell Brittany on our team and start working that angle. Friendsgiving. It's so close to Thanksgiving. You know, I've never really known what that is, but let's call our retreat Friendsgiving based on that one. Yeah, It's one idea. It might get voted down. We like to vote on our names as a team. Bruce, yeah. how about you pray for us? I sure will. Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Um, I'm just remembering that Christianity is the only faith whose God bears the scars of evil. So even when we're puzzling about the mystery of suffering and evil in this world, we know that you've gone there. You know more about evil than any other person. And you have experienced it on our behalf. And we're just grateful. Help us, Lord, to be able to, by your spirit and with this simple little metaphor, be able to remember you more often. That we would get to receive the joy of this celebration that you started in such an informal way in the upper room that none of, even the people that were there owned it. Uh, and it was uh, accompanied by food, yes, by washing of feet, yes, all those things. But then you had this little simple thing that everyone in the world can do uh, as they as they know you. So thank you for that. Thank you for uh, giving us a little chance to spin this out and to um, maybe give a vision to lots of Christians who have grown a little uh, stale with this uh, metaphor and a little institutional. Just help us today to have a fresh vision of you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. 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 Thanks, man. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs>